Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Allie and I post a lot of content, but the majority of it, besides vlogs and other things like that, is beauty and here recently books. And so going into the new year, I thought it would be a lot of fun to start putting out these videos where I'm kind of combining the two in a way. Um, I still absolutely love doing my makeup and I like playing with exciting, fun palettes and showing you guys them. Um, but my adventure with books is just growing and growing and growing. Like the passion is growing. I'm having so much fun with it. So yeah. If you're here for the books or you're here for the makeup, you get a two for one in this. Um, but the bonus is that each of these videos are going to be five looks and five books. So I'm going to title that probably five books, five looks, something like that. And I've actually been filming these um, since November. So you guys are going to be seeing them and they're going to kind of all be scattered a little bit, reading them at different times, but I just thought it would be kind of cool to do it that way and um, kind of share like many parts of my life, what I did my makeup as at that point and where I was currently at that time and what I was currently reading at that time. So I thought it'd be really cool, but it is going to be actual book reviews because the books I'm talking about are ones that I have completed. So yeah, I am going to jump into this. Um, by saying Happy New Year. You guys are probably going to see this video in January, hopefully, fingers crossed, that's the plan. Um, <laughs> if things go to plan, you will. And I'm just kind of doing different genres in this video. I'm thinking it's going to stay kind of thriller, mystery, horror vibes is kind of in there. While some of these videos might be like just sticking to like one genre. But it is actually January 1st when I'm filming this and 3.40 in the morning um, <laughs> to be exact. So we just celebrated New Year's Eve. The alcohol is kind of like starting to subside. So I'm actually pretty coherent. <laughs> I just got a little buzz tonight um, with a gin and tonic. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to wait until the house is settled and then I'm going to come and, you know, kind of set up a little area and start the first part of this because I, just this past week I finished this book. So I'm really excited to talk about it and I hope you guys like this new journey I'm kind of approaching with this and just kind of wanting to, um, mix the passions up a little bit and hopefully make things interesting for you guys too, especially if you love both of these. And if you are new here and you stumble across this video, I hope you hit subscribe and stay. But let's jump in first. First look, we'll talk about the look really quick. Um, I used my Haunted Europe palette from Nomad Cosmetics. They are an indie brand that I am, I just adore. I absolutely love them. They travel, hence the name Nomad, and they create palettes based off of different places that they travel and visit. And they're just always phenomenal. I just did uh, three looks with one palette featuring their palette, um, the Hudson Valley, and it's absolutely stunning. It definitely is fall vibes, but it I did so many like festive looks with it. Check it out if you're interested, but I love that one as well. But this look today, you guys get to see, um, I kind of did <laughs> as like touch up makeup because I have worn this all day long. Yeah, it was kind of like melting off by the time I got home. I was wearing a sweater earlier. Um, I just kind of wanted to touch it up a little bit and I am just kind of including my eyes and lips I think for these because I feel like if I am to include more we'll be here all day. So taking this palette, my go-to look recently has been taking the Count Dracula shade which is right here. It's kind of like a 
it's kind of like a taupe brown but it kind of almost pulls like a grunge purple and um just like with a angled blender brush i just kind of put it on my outer corner i've been rocking this like anytime i'm doing quick makeup i will just throw on like my usual base products on my face everything that i do with that my brows you know all of those things and then i've just been keeping this palette on my desk and literally reaching for it because i love this count dracula shade so much but day to day when i'm wearing this look i love this like cream satin like shade um to just put on like the inner corner but for today since i was wearing this dress which i absolutely love it's like a t-shirt dress and i put a black sweater over it i love this highgate cemetery it's this shade right here it's so stunning i don't even know if the camera does it justice how stunning it is it's Oh, very very sheer but it's kind of like this like minty shimmery just magical shade i am absolutely obsessed with it this has been my like everyday go-to look when i am just needing to look somewhat decent put together i've changed my lipstick like five different times today i've changed the shade i was wearing a nude earlier and then i was like oh, i kind of want something a little bit deeper so i went a little bit deeper and then once I finally settled, I just went to what I absolutely love. And you guys are probably going to see this repeatedly in these videos because I wear this all the time. Always, when in doubt, I go for this lipstick. Um, this is from Black Moon Cosmetics, another indie brand. I talk about this a lot in my videos, I feel like. But this is their liquid lipstick in Willow. It's just my favorite lip shade. It's just so pretty. I love a good brown. That is the look today, the book today is Secluded Cabin Sleeps 6. And this is a newer release. I believe this was, if I'm not mistaken, November, but I could be wrong of this last year, 2022. I will try to check and then throw it up if I am wrong, but I believe it was November. It was 2022, um, and I know it's pretty new. But this is by Lisa Unger, and first book by her. There's a lot to unpack with this book. <laughs> Um, ultimately four skulls from me because it was good. I feel like it was an overall good book. Um, and the fact that like I enjoyed the writing, I found it super exciting reading. You're very invested. It's a page turner in many spots. There is a few spots where you're just kind of like, you know, kind of like teetering back and forth. But the perfect thing with this is that literally the very first page right here, says Christmas night 2017 and I literally started this book it was either Christmas Eve or Christmas Day and I was like whoa such good timing <laughs> and ultimately this is going to be like my last like read of the year or whatever um but you know with Christmas we just got really really busy with things and so I had to keep setting it down my mind was on this book <laughs> so that says something but I found super cool while reading this was the overall vibe that I got while reading this because we got snowed in like completely snowed in it came down so hard we had a white Christmas and we were literally stuck at our house so this usually happens at least once a year but the fact that it happened right on christmas while i was reading like this book about these six people being in a secluded cabin and um not being able to get out like oh my gosh it was just like perfect timing and i got some shots of it by the snow because of that because i was just like oh, the vibes um so we did have a snow day there was a lot of times where i had to keep putting the book down and you know you know create those memories so nothing like lost there it was a good time but yeah i kept wanting to come back for this book and it did end up being my last book of the year but with that being said i have to say i just i have some feelings and oh man i so wanted to give this book five stars i really really did um, it was almost there. It really was. If you've been on my channel last year, I read Just Like Home. And people, there's been a lot of opinions about this book. I definitely critiqued it. I felt like it was very overwhelming. I talked a lot about there being just a lot going on, a lot of plots. I feel like a book needs a good plot. Sometimes you can throw two plot points in there and just really make them just 
vibe and really mesh together really well but like with just like home i felt like there was like three aspects that were like big enough plots that in the end they somewhat mesh together but it just kind of left me feeling kind of like ugh, you know like i was just like i can't i couldn't give it five stars and i said this could be three different books or even just two if they would have just taken one of those plots out and then just kept two of them together or you know something like that um and that's kind of the same vibe i'm getting with this one and it's so frustrating and so hard because i want i really 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 want to talk about it with you guys but at the same time like it's not a bad book i don't want to spoil it i don't want to give anything away but it just makes it really really challenging for me to be able to actually explain why this book irritated me or why I'm critiquing it because it's not a bad book. I just felt like there's just certain aspects to it. You have these six individuals who are staying at this cabin and you have like this just ugh, asshole of a character who is the brother and he is just like he's always just bragging about himself every conversation that they have he's bragging about himself and then you have his wife who is kind of like that instagram fitness model and she does yoga and plotties and she made this character just like i don't know just do everything for her husband even though he's just like oh, then you have the brother's sister who is sort of the main character, although we kind of jump back and forth and between different perspectives throughout the entire book. And Hannah is supposed to be kind of the main character though. Um, and you have her and it doesn't, I just feel like the character development just didn't really build a whole lot with her. Best friend named Cricket, <laughs> who is also at the cabin. Honestly, all these people are just awful. Not great. Not my cup of tea, people. But I'm not mad at that because if we're talking a secluded cabin out, they can't go anywhere and something bad's gonna go down, I'm not that invested in the characters to really care about the outcome. <laughs> but you have Hannah and her husband and her husband is just kind of like constantly on his phone or working or you know he's just very quiet like is his intentions good or bad for Hannah and then you have the last two that are of no relations like related but Cricket is their childhood friend. Now, what the synopsis does not say is the fact that while this whole story is playing out and it sounds good right? It sounds really good. I mean secluded cabin these six individuals you have like these people like the owner you have the chef you have you know the waiter or whatever um you, you know you have like all these people that are kind of like floating through the house as well and there's this you know a spooky story about the past of what went down at this place and it just sounds like an amazing book an amazing time and it did really give those vibes i know i've referenced this before but it gave me until dawn vibes for sure <laughs> and it didn't help that there was a character named hannah <laughs> and i just kept thinking it's just a prank can <laughs> there's a, literally a line in this book that's so close to that they didn't say prank but they said something like calm down han or something like that and i just couldn't without thinking of <laughs> Just a prank can. <laughs> Without giving anything away, there's another whole storyline that is slipped into chapters or in between chapters of other people not mentioned besides the workers and the six at the cabin. It's another whole storyline that's also playing out. It's intriguing. It's interesting. I really liked it and again her writing is incredible. I was just confused the whole time because I was just like why are we getting all this? Like why why are we getting these two stories? And obviously I knew it was going to wrap up in the end and come together but I just kept thinking like how or why and like if this does I'm really not going to like it and there I am. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think it's just another moment where I feel like it was a missed opportunity because it could have been two really amazing books. Again, her writing style, phenomenal. I definitely want to read more from her. She is the author of Last Girl Ghosted, so 
I'm gonna have to pick that one up soon. So today I finally filmed my Pantone color of the year look and I used the Jawbreaker palette from Jeffree Star Cosmetics. It just has some really pretty pink and magenta hues to it so I knew it was going to be the perfect palette for this look. Um, you guys can check out the whole video. This is kind of a sneak peek. I think my Pantone color of the year video is going to come out after this video though with how long it's taking me to film it. So. Coming soon, this is a sneak peek. But on the lips, I have a liner liquid lipstick duo going on today. This is the Lord & Berry lip liner in the shade, just nude, I guess. And then this is the Velour liquid lipstick from Jeffree Star Cosmetics as well in the shade Doll Parts. And I think it just played together, monochromatic um, for Viva Magenta, the Pantone color of the year. This is the look today. I did not feel like doing my hair, so. The book today though is Such Sharp Teeth and I'm actually including this in because I never really did content with this book. I actually read it in December and um, that was when I had the idea to do this video and to do five books and five looks. So I was like, you know what? I really want this to be a part of it even if I film this in um, January. And just so happens my library let me recheck it out so um, without having to take it back. So I can have it for this video. And I really wanna talk about this because I know that my brain's gonna start getting foggy with it. And I think I talked about it in a vlog somewhat, but you kind of have that like typical twins. They're twin sisters and one of them moved away. She got away from the hometown, but now after those all those years, she's successful at her job. She likes her job, but her sister has found out that she's pregnant and she still lives in the hometown and the man ran off. So like, she's going to have to raise a baby by herself. She's really scared, nervous. So her twin sister, who is the successful one, who has moved away, decides to come back home to her hometown and stay with her sister for the rest of the pregnancy and help her um, for pretty much like the maternity leave until she has to just go back to the real world and her job and all of that. So there is, I feel like some plot, plot holes with that because it's just like, it, it doesn't even explain that this is a job that she could work like from home, you know? It's just kind of like, okay job, I'm leaving for several months because my sister is pregnant. Not because I'm pregnant, but my sister, you know? And it just, it does make you kind of like, I feel like not a lot of jobs would let you do that. <laughs> um, so there is plot holes, I feel like, there. I think it would be different if she was, like, working remotely. That's not the case. Um, she gets there. She is out. And, I mean, I feel like it kind of gives you a glimpse that she's been there, but not for very long. And she's already, like, at a bar and getting a little tipsy before she go drives home. And, um she hits an animal and she gets out to inspect like all people in horror movies and books do and is attacked. And we find out that it is in fact, it's, it's a werewolf book. So it's the experience of her turning into and morphing into a werewolf in itself, which does definitely have horror aspects to it that I actually really appreciated. I feel like some people are like, there's not enough. And I do feel like there was some scenes that were so cut short that I was like, man, it really had potential to be like even more terrifying if you would continue. But there's still some gruesome stuff and even parts that I was like, ugh, about. But I just, I overall found it really interesting to read about and I, I did like the horror aspect. I do wish there was a little bit more, but I also think like the amount we got was still really good to qualify it as a good horror book. Um, it was the rest of the story that just kind of like did me in. Now, I did like the cattiness and kind of like the drama that you get with some of these characters and them being back and it's like, 
she is she feels obligated to like throw a baby shower and stuff like that so it's like then all of a sudden you have a bunch of like people that they went to like high school with like coming to it so there's like that awkwardness cattiness towards each other and like drama um but honestly i feel like there was just some characters if you've read this you know but like there is some characters that i feel like their like whole position I feel like it should have been built up a lot more than what it was until they're like thrown into like this the book the story and then you're just like okay you know just go rolling with this now um I still was kind of I mean I didn't mind the twists and turns of it but yeah I just felt like there wasn't enough character development with most of the characters to make it more interesting I guess or more likable as a twist or a turn that I mean I feel like that is like the gist of this book um without giving any or more away so I overall liked it definitely isn't like a five for me but I would give it four um the only other thing that I really wanted to mention was I feel like there was a really pointless romance moment in this book that I just didn't really care for I have seen that some people like this is an unpopular opinion like some people really really like this but it's kind of like she bumps into like her um high school sweetheart and then like there's that I think also I'm just not a fan of the trope of like you know um like a do-over I don't know I just I have found that so far for me in a lot of books especially a horror book though like it just wasn't really my vibe um, I didn't really care for it and I think it just kind of in a way almost turned this like from I feel like going in like a really cool direction horror wise to then kind of turning it into almost like feeling like I was reading a scene from like Twilight or something like that which I kind of want to pick that series up again it's been years. <laughs> But yeah, overall, I'm not mad at it. I just feel like it had potential to be even more. So I am a little disappointed in some aspects, but at the same time, I overall think it was still pretty entertaining um, to read and I really did at the time. Today I read Daphne. I finished it. I honestly didn't know what I was getting myself into, I guess, with Daphne. The story of Daphne revolves around, I, I feel like, decades of girl basketball teams. But for the most part, we're following these girls who, it's supposed to be more, like, modern, like, today but <laughs> I do I don't know I kind of get the vibe from the storytelling that I don't know I feel like these girls are supposed to be like in the 80s besides mentions of like cell phones and certain internet things and stuff like that like I just get like 80s vibes but I think it's also because of who Daphne is so it plays a lot on Daphne as being someone who is supposed to be almost like the Bloody Mar Mary challenge, you know, look in the mirror and then, you know, you say Bloody Mary three times, turn the light off. Or, I mean, I feel like everybody has like their own way of how they learned how to do Bloody Mary, but it's almost like that. So Daphne is supposed to be kind of like this like figment of your imagination, like that you're conjuring to you. Um, but it's a slasher book so I think you can catch my drift on like the fact that it's not just gonna be this like figment of imagination but the actual thing and Daphne the way Daphne is described in this it's quite terrifying I feel like I almost should have put on like kiss makeup and did like the whole jean jacket moment and everything to just kind of frighten you guys a little bit but instead we're going with a very grunge look today can check out this makeup look. It was one of my looks in my Kylie Batman video. So I'll link it up here. I did three looks with that Batman palette and for the most part they're pretty smoky. <laughs> this but perfect for the type of books I'm reading. It is such a cute moment though and since I get to show you guys my makeup for this um, I went in with just very you know dark shades kind of keeping it a little grunge um, and then I went into Batcave which you guys can see on camera. It pulls so green and it really does looking at it too. Like it's a black shade that has specks all the way through it but 
you also kind of get a little bit of like a blue and I really wanted the blue to like, you know, pop. It just wasn't. So I took the eyeliner, where is it? The eyeliner that came in the set, the blue one on my waterline, and then I took the bright blue superhero shade on the lower lash line to just try to pull a little bit more blue to the look, but I don't know, now I just feel like it's like an in-between green blue going on. Anyways, the lip, I'm obsessed though. Oh my gosh, you guys. I did my favorite black lipstick, Lunar Beauty Liquid Lip. It's the shade Wicked. I don't know if it's still available or if it was just like a around Halloween thing, but oh my gosh, this formula is amazing. I love it. Um, but I took the blue gloss that came in the set. It's called Pow. And it's so hard to see, but when I first applied this, you guys, so stunning. And I'm not usually a glossy lip person, but this black glossy moment you see that so beautiful it's changing my mind you guys want to see this look like an action um, go check out that video and there's two other looks um using this palette and collection but back to daphne i have to say I really really enjoyed the writing style it is kind of and I think there's even a mention of it of like the type of style he went with and writing this as far as the layout because there's no chapters you just like keep going throughout it which I enjoy but I do kind of like having like those stopping points or like those separation points so it's not as confusing but I feel like the more you read it the more you kind of just jump on board with it and just keep sailing through and it's a shorter book so it doesn't bother me that much but I don't know if that's like his style in general this is my first Josh Matherman so his other books could be completely different but um I know it was mentioned so yeah I found the characters to be pretty intriguing I mean it's like high school girls that are on the basketball team and it talks about how you know four of them are kind of like a, a tight-knit friend group you know it involves other players of the team too so that's how they're they quickly find out that like the entire team is being targeted because even people that are not really in their friend group but it's on the team are being targeted as well and I have to say, since it is, like, kids in this book, it's pretty gut-wrenching, you know? Like, those scenes are just, like, I was like, man, this is really intense. I started thinking, I was like, Allie, every slasher movie you watch is usually a bunch of teenagers, you know, at Camp Crystal Lake or, you know, in high school settings like Scream and... It's like, it's always like these younger kid or teenagers, you know? But man, the writing of this is so good. I definitely, I was getting freaked out. I was waiting for a seven foot Daphne to walk around the corner and be standing there in all of her kiss makeup glory staring at me. I was really creeped out in some parts of this. Um, he definitely has a way with words and horror aspect of it, although, the the plot around it and asking the rim of the basket questions and all of all everything that went with it is so quirky unique and honestly silly but like I absolutely love it I feel like that's what makes a great slasher horror so I actually really enjoyed like the concept of it and even if you go into this book or you're just like uh I don't like basketball and it just doesn't really seem like my thing I don't either I'm not a big basketball person I say that because even my knowledge is probably like really low. You don't have to have a huge knowledge on basketball to really enjoy this. Um, I feel like the horror element is so big in this and all the scare factors that e it's so easy to just bypass the concept of the game. Um, as in just looking at it more so as like anybody who has a passion for something. So I really enjoyed that too because I was like, man, is this going to be really heavy basketball because my knowledge is... I think there's a few mentions of like different basketball players and stuff and some of those just kind of whoosh right over my head. But besides that, it was still really enjoyable while being about a sport I don't really watch and having kind of like I said that quirky funny type of play into what Daphne is and you should go into it as blindly as you can and it's such a ride and so fun. I had such a fun time reading it. Okay, so 
for today's look, I did kind of play up with a few different things. I was just playing around and um, wasn't the exact look I had in mind, but nonetheless, I actually really do like it. I just took some neutral shades out of this Tarte palette, the Sunrise palette, literally like this brown, a little bit of this dark brown, and my crease just to have a little bit of definition. And then the main star of the show is this ColourPop Jelly Mutt Shadow in the shade Hallucinous. I have no idea how to say that, but it is absolutely beautiful and yeah I'm obsessed with it and it's like this purple um cream sheen that just like there's so much to it it's so pretty I literally put it all over there's just like that definition from those neutral shades I went into first that really helped pull the look together too but I really wanted like this like glossy look so I did take a little bit of the dewy highlight it's a glossy dewy highlight from Ciate London over my lids. I did take a little bit of the pigment, so I had to kind of go back and forth with them, but I've been taking some classes. If you guys missed that video, um, I'll link it up above. Uh, but yeah, I took some classes, and I, I have been taking some classes, and one of the looks we just did was um, this glossy look, and that's what I just learned about. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do like a little glossy moment. So that's what I was going for. I have the gloss on my face too. It's a little sticky, but it is the editorial glossy look. On the lips is a new favorite. I'm obsessed. I actually thought this was gonna be a lot darker when I ordered it, but this is a Jeffree Star Bullet lipstick. Um, well, I don't know what these are called just like a standard they literally look like a bullet <laughs> um but it is a brown so I was like I, I have to have it it's called man down and it is absolutely beautiful today's book is the husbands by Chandler Baker so this book kind of took me back a little bit. I, I actually was talking the other day to James about it. I was like, you know, for some reason, whenever I start a book and it starts off really, really slow and then it ends up being slow all the way through, it's not that I'm like, oh, so frustrated that just this book is like so slow. It's the fact that whenever I read a slow book, it never fails. The next two or three books will also be slow. Is that just me or does it happen to you too? It's almost like it's like a curse for me at this point. So yeah, I just kind of really had that vibe with this book and I was like, oh man, I'm going to be starting off on this slow curse now. And since I have finished this, I have started my next book for this video and it's slow and I'm like, Oh, the curse, it, it stayed. I thought maybe I was like, no, I'm just going to try to manifest that this, this may be a slow book, but I will get through it and my next one will not be slow. The curse continues, but I did finish this book. I didn't DNF it. Um, oh, a lot of thoughts with it. Honestly, the writing style is not bad. It is entertaining enough. I think it was just the plot of the story 50% of this book is a woman complaining about her life. <laughs> and if you don't know what this book is about, it is, think Stepford Wives, but it's the husbands. So it's like this almost like Desperate Housewives Wisteria Lane where everything looks perfect from the outside, but there's so much going on on the inside. And you have tons of really um, career-driven women who are very, what's the word, very successful. They're, they all are very successful in their career. So the outside looking in from the perspective of the main character, Nora, who is very career-driven, but at the same time, she's balancing and teetering on that mom <laughs> you know, motherhood, and also wanting to have a successful career and having a hard time with that. And there's like a lot of strain on her marriage with her husband because she feels like she has to put in more effort because she wears the mom title and not the dad title. So there's a lot of strain back and forth between her just trying to juggle her life as being a mom and having a career. And on top of that, the strain with her marriage of feeling like she 
needs more help and feels like she's made it perfectly clear that she needs more help and maybe he just is like not really caring. So it definitely is building up that suspense of like, okay, we're really getting the dynamic of her family and her life and how unhappy she is that it's really going to go, you know, with this weird neighborhood that they're looking at a house um, to buy on the street or in the vicinity of this, like, I guess, like, community. Um, but on top of that, mysteriously, a house has also burnt down in this neighborhood recently. And since she is um, an attorney who's kind of just been working on, like, paperwork for the most part, she is offered the case to see if there's any, like, foul play with this or pretty much what the people want from it is, like, a higher insurance claim, so more money out of it um, because one of the husbands died in this fire. So throughout it, Nora is meeting all the women of the neighborhood and seeing how successful they are and also how every single time she bumps into one of their husbands, their husbands are very prim and proper and, you know, is constantly doing a load of dishes or laundry or cleaning out a certain cabinet that Nora's like, oh my gosh, I should have cleaned mine out so long ago and I keep forgetting about and doing all those tasks that we sometimes just put off because we feel like we don't have enough time in the day. And then whenever they are spoken to, it's that same, you know, just trying to do something to help out. I love my wife. She works so hard. And like, it's just this constant repetitive thing that she is hearing. So you definitely get the buildup of like the step, step forward husbands, if you will. But when I tell you guys, this lady, this book stressed me out. And that's what I don't like about reading a book. I want to sit down and feel cozy and comfortable, especially like with a book like this where it's just like that mystery and thriller suspense and like, you know, what's going to happen next type of ordeal. But I'm telling you guys, 50% of this book is so slow, but I think it was also slow for me because I just had to like keep putting it down. I was like, man, I'm stressed out right now. Like my kids have 50,000 things going on at school. I'm working on, you know, content and stuff like that and trying to like pump out stuff and trying to juggle everything and love my husband. He helps me so, so much. We really are a team in this. So I don't really feel a lot of the strain there, but I, I still feel the strain of just constantly feeling like you're drowning and you're behind on things. So like this book just stressed me out so much because I think I would see everything that she was like juggling and I'd be like, oh my God, like look at my list of things to do too. So I don't know. It just was, it was a lot. I felt really stressed out throughout the book. <laughs> Not really a pleasant time um, of just constantly feeling like, oh my God, I'm, this lady's drowning. I'm drowning. And like, although it's relatable in some instances, it's also kind of, I just kind of got to a point where I was just like, oh my gosh, like lady, do something with your life, then you're so miserable and unhappy. And I get like, we all kind of fall into like that rut. Um, both parents do at times. And, you know, it is, it was a good reminder for me to slow down and take some time for myself to breathe. You know, things might be falling apart in some places of my house, but I just have to breathe a little bit <laughs> to get through it. But I would say about 50% of the book, um, then it kind of really picks up and you're going back and forth on like trying to figure out these people in this neighborhood and what all's going on and how, how this book is going to turn out, the suspense of things, but also like it is intriguing her looking into and investigating this fire and um, all of the key characters in it too, I think really make it interesting and fun as well. Um, it, there's it's drama filled too so that's always fun and overall I would probably give it a four I just feel like again 50% of the book just being like the same old same old chapter after chapter of just this lady just losing her shit that's pretty much what it is like being like oh my gosh I this slipped my mind this slipped my mind who's gonna take care of my kid who's gonna do this I I you know have to make the lunch. I have to make sure this outfit is ready. You know, oh, she has this practice after school and 
just so much. My head was kind of spinning and I think it just was too close to comfort of what I'm usually trying to escape that reality of when going into a book. <laughs> but yeah, besides that, I feel like for the average reader, even if you're not going through all of those things, you, it's probably at some point still going to be like, oh my god, kind of stressful just reading about this lady's life. But also just like, again, with it being like 50% of the book, it's just kind of like, it just overall makes the book a little slow and kind of hard to get through because it just other things should have been happening a lot sooner to just make it more interesting to stay with in a way. But I can say wrapping up the book, I really did like it. I think it was a really fun and interesting read, something a little bit different than what I've been reading recently. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I liked the the mystery vibe of it, but I also loved just like the drama and just I guess I guess you could say funness of it of, you know, the whole twist and like the Stepford husband type of ordeal um made it a lot of fun to read as well, especially like I said, towards more so the end. But yeah, my first book by Chandler Baker, so um I was excited to read it and reading just the synopsis already had me in because I love that type of vibe where it's just drama filled but you also have like that suspense and mystery to it. I love those. Hey guys, so today I am rocking one of my favorite palettes. This is from Rebel Rouge Labs, and I'm going for this green moment here. I took the shade Grandeur. It's this like matte green that's just like the perfect like garden green shade. And then I went into Body Electric, which is the metallic lighter green, and I really love the combo of them. I've been wanting to do a green eye recently, so I was like, perfect time. My lip turned out a little bit more pinky than I wanted, but you know what? Valentine's Day is right around the corner, so I guess I better get used to it because I have a lot of Valentine's looks that I'm wanting to start getting done for you guys. So I used a brown lip liner. You can't really see it paired with this lip, but I did line my lips with it um, from Persona. It's 90210. And then I went into this uh, pink. It looks a lot lighter in the packaging, but on my lips and I guess paired with this, it's more pink, um, but it is a velour liquid lipstick from Jeffree Star in the shade Birthday Suit. So yeah, I think it's supposed to be a lot more nude, but it definitely pulled more pink on me. Also just kind of letting my hair air dry today and just like showing it some love. So some different hair oil and yeah, it's doing its thing today. But my last book for this video is The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. And this is my first book, once again, <laughs> um, by Lucy Foley. I know that she has really popular books such as The Guest List and The Hunting Party. I imagine they are very similar to this read. So this read going into it, I'm not gonna lie, it was slow. Told you guys in one of the last parts, my last book that I read, husbands it was slow and I was like there's just this curse like I feel like once I have a slow book it never fails the next two or three books are slow as well getting into them and it held true with this one I don't know I think it was a mixture of the overall story but also the writing style getting into it it's like she really wanted to build it up but I just kind of found it slow Maybe that's just me and my preference, but I kind of wish that during that time frame more happened. Don't get me wrong, a lot does happen. There is, it, it's kind of like this like murder mystery. And since it's in this apartment building, it's like, it's almost like Clue. Like the character is trying to figure out who did it and um, overall like what happened because it's her brother. So it's very emotional, but it's also like suspenseful because you want to figure out what happened and why it happened. And it's kind of like that he knew too much type of ordeal going on. Um, and that's really all I want to give you guys because I don't want to like give any of it away. I feel like overall they wrapped it up nicely, but 
I don't know. I think I still kind of expected a little more from it, but I really do like the fact that there really wasn't any loose ends with this book. I feel like you're kind of free to think what you want in the end and what happens with these characters, but at the same time, like, the whole plot is wrapped up and I really appreciated that because I was just like, this could go so many different ways and we may be left just like not knowing everything. So I really appreciated that everything was wrapped up and I feel like it was done in a way that's more realistic than just kind of like over the top or something that you're just like that would never happen. It actually pretty much is realistic and I think that gives it a little bit more of like that eerie suspense that I actually really did enjoy. I feel like by 50% and on it's pretty enjoyable and it's kind of speeds up fast pace. And that's where I want to say the story doesn't really have chapters, um, but each section is kind of like, um, well, that's a prologue, but like, it'll say like Sophie penthouse. So Sophie is a character who lives in the penthouse and so on and so forth. Jess is Ben's sister and Ben is the one that we, he's missing. We don't know what happened. There's clues that he has been murdered. So we're trying to figure out what's going on. But then there's like Mimi and I think Mimi is fourth floor. And then Nick is, I think, second floor, something like that. So it just kind of jumps around from different perspectives. You're figuring out who each character is. They kind of have some surprises and plots to themselves. And I overall think the characters were pretty enjoyable to like read about. They're very different, unique characters. And I feel like each time you're leaving a perspective, it kind of leaves you on a little bit of a hanger like what are they up to? Are they in on something? Like, what what's going on here? So you definitely stay questioning. Again, I would say for me anyways, personally, I feel like about halfway through on, it became more of like a page turner or where I was more invested. I don't even know if I could call it a page turner because I still kind of feel like in some ways, it's kind of like a suspense slow burn. But... I guess that would kind of make it more of like a cozy mystery, which I definitely get those vibes, but there also is kind of like more of that emotional aspect to it where you're going to kind of feel like sad and times at times, but also like almost like you're on like the edge of your seat. So then it's kind of hard to be a little cozy, <laughs> if that makes sense. But Overall, I don't think I could give this five, but I do think I could give it four. I think, I do think it was enjoyable enough read and how everything was wrapped up to give it um, four. I don't know if she's really an author that like I would gravitate towards. I definitely think I would read more from her, but I think I need them to be a little like spaced out since I did find this one to be a little slow for me to get into. But story plot wise, I think is something that I would really enjoy. So I do think I want to pick up some more of hers in the future. Um, if you have any you want to recommend, let me know. But I do know that the guest list is a pretty popular one that a lot of people like. Yeah, out of the five books that I read, um, I really had this like spaced out and I wanted to post it a lot earlier for you guys, but the month is kind of getting away from me. But I do have a lot more book content coming in February. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video, whether you see it in January or February, and I just know that whenever I'm reading a certain genre that's usually not my favorite genre, aka romance right now, I like to have those like in-between books, and this little video series here has really helped me with that of reading like a little mixture of mystery and thriller and horror and just kind of helped me get through like all the romance I've been reading too, so yeah. Let me know out of these five books. We read The Husbands, The Paris Apartment, um, Such Sharp Teeth, Daphne, and Secluded Cabin Sleeps Six. Let me know which ones you've read or if you've read all of them, which one was your favorite? I would really like to know. Now that I am thinking about all of them, I think I gave all of these three or four stars. We definitely had some books that started a little slow for me. I also had some books that 
there was some things of the books that I definitely was just like, oh, I wish that was different or there was too much going on, stuff like that. But honestly, I'm pretty happy with how this video turned out with the selection of books. I feel like it was really good. I mean, I don't think I really have any like five star, like amazing and it was just perfect, but so many four stars that I'm really content with that and really happy with all of these books that I read for this video. But yeah, again, let me know if you've read any of these. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.